Hey y'all, I wanted to sit down to film this video uh, during Pride Month because I think it's so important and I am very open and transparent with all of you about so much to do with my life and I have never really sat down to tell this story. So today I'm going to be telling you guys my coming out story. Coming out was something that I was absolutely horrified to do. Uh, you know, you, you grow up in the South like I did, and you see and hear horrible things and horrible experiences that people go through. I knew that when the time came uh, and I had decided to come out, that there was a very real possibility that my entire family would cut me off, that I would be excommunicated, that they would stop loving me. That is a very real and a very possible outcome. So often we focus so much on the really amazing parents out there who don't do that to their children, but we don't oftentimes talk about the very real fear that queer people and trans people have about coming out. I was terrified and I made that decision um, in college. Uh, but there were some other circumstances that kind of made the decision on when I was coming out for me. Um, I didn't ultimately really get to make that decision. I was kind of forced into it. You know, I, I oftentimes hear people that always like to say, you know, my, I had like the easiest childhood. I never wanted for anything. I, you know had everything handed to me and you know it's oftentimes it kind of aggravates me because while I know that I was better off than some other people um internally I had a very hard childhood emotionally and mentally it was draining at times and sometimes it was very hard to want to get out of the bed to go to school every day sometimes it was really difficult to just want to continue existing. Um, I knew that there was something different about me, but I didn't realize that anything that, I didn't realize that difference was bad until I began to be bullied at school and at church for being different. I didn't know that being different in the way that I was different was bad until it was weaponized against me by my peers and by their parents, to be quite frank. I remember parents telling children to say certain things to me. I remember parents sitting inside of my dance studio and overhearing them say things about me as if I wasn't standing 15 feet away. I remember hearing horrible things being spread about me. I remember being tormented day in and day out at school and as social media began to become a thing online. This is kind of hard to say. Um, There was a time when I would go to bed every night and pray that I wouldn't wake up. Because the pain of just existing and being different was too much. The reality that I was going to have to go to school the next day and hear the same homophobic insults thrown at me the same horrible things said about me to be ridiculed and mocked and excluded and at times physically assaulted, sometimes that was just too much for me to bear and I would have thoughts about taking my own life. There were days I would hold a bottle of pills and think tonight's the night because I just can't do this anymore. 
The distinction that I want to make, though, is, is that I did not, did not want to take my own life as a child because I hated myself. I hated myself because of the way that other people treated me. I didn't think that there was anything wrong with just being who I was and understanding that I had an attraction to other men. I didn't know that that was wrong until everyone else around me decided to say it. Until everyone else around me started to call me names. Until everyone else around me decided to say horrible things about gay people and about trans people and about queer people and about more effeminate men, even within my own family. We don't hate ourselves because we think we're wrong. We hate ourselves because we can't be normal. And you're gonna hear me talk about that word a lot, normal. What is normal? It's such a backwards thing to even have to think about that a child would rather die than to be allowed to be who they are and express who they are to the world. But it is something that we deal with in this country and in this world on an everyday basis. So while on the outside, I grew up in a, you know, a family that was great and I have I do have a wonderful family um, because my family was well off because I had new clothes and nice things and because I lived in a nice house I wasn't allowed to express that my upbringing and my childhood was plagued with depression, was plagued with anxiety, was plagued with self-hatred, and yes, was plagued with self-mutilation as well. Don't think I've ever said that out loud. Um, it was really hard some days. And I always just wanted to get out. Um, I would show up at school in the morning and I was just ready for three o'clock. I wanted to get out because I knew that I was gonna be bullied. I knew that I was gonna be mocked and ridiculed. I knew that I was going to be harassed. It was something every day, even if I did not outwardly show it, I wanted to get out. Um, the rise of social media at the same time played a very interesting role in, in my upbringing as well. Because no longer was getting bullied restricted to being at school or at church or in, you know, in a social situation. Now I was going home with that. It became bullying 24-7, seven, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And I can tell you that things that were said about me, things that were posted about me, I remember them. And I think I will for the rest of my life because they were extremely hurtful. They were extremely impactful and a very negative way they were extremely painful all I ever wanted was to just be accepted and loved and feel like I was a part of something but that was never going to happen for me sadly um, in in the town that I lived in and in, in the age of my growing up you know in the Mid-90s and the beginning of the 2000s, it was not very easy for people like me and for people in my community. And I think we oftentimes forget 
that these newer steps towards equality were not really that long ago. So, you know, going off to college was really, for me, um, a breath of fresh air. It was a time for me to explore who I was and to find myself and to get to be the Patrick that I had always wanted to be. I went off to college and I tried to live a lie. And I thought this lie was super believable. And now that I look back, it's laughable. Um, and I know it was very laughable to the people around me and my peers and my friends. Um, but uh, sadly, I didn't really get to make the choice of when I was going to come out. Um, that choice was kind of made for me. Um, there were two people who made that choice for me um, because of finding some old Facebook messages and uh, they decided that they were going to use that as a way of threatening me. Um, keep in mind, I did hurt one of these people and I fully owned, I can fully own up to that now, um, years later. Um, but at that point, there were threats made that they were going to share some of these things publicly. Um, and I had to make the choice right then and there to go to my closest friends and own my truth and to reveal to them that I was gay. And I, at that point, was not ready to make that choice. That, you know, deep down I was gay, but growing up in a society that praises only heterosexual relationships and coming from a very conservative and Christian background, those were things that, you know, being gay was something like you just did not do. Um, and there was so much shame attached to coming out for me because of the environment that I was raised in. And so I just, I had questions about whether or not I was going to be happy, if I was going to have a family when I decided to come out, if I was going to be able to be successful in life. And I didn't have really anyone to look up to. There wasn't a real life example of a successful gay man in my hometown that I could just look up to and be like, look, everything's going to be okay. So I, I was questioning a lot of things of like, what does this mean for me? What is it going to mean for me? Um, and so after, you know, deciding that I, you know, had to tell my friends that one night, um, I decided to just tell a lot of the people that I was around at school. And I decided to step into that truth and not be afraid of it. It was scary as hell. And it was really hard some days because I also knew that I was living a lie to my family. And I continued to be out to the people that I knew in college, um, but I was not out to my family at home. I was not ready to make that decision yet. I was not ready to come out to them at that time. And so I gave myself the time that I needed to figure out a few things first. So that way I knew going into a conversation with family that it would be one where I would not be, you know, questioned. I would have, you know, complete answers for them if they had questions. And I wanted to make sure that I was going to have a support system 
um, if ultimately I did lose my family. I told myself I was going to cry. I'm trying to pull it together. Um, I need a minute. Give me the right words, Lord. Give me the right words. <laughs> <laughs>